Hello and welcome to textbook engineering problem. Today we're working out of elementary principles of chemical processes third edition. We're doing problem number 3.9. An object of density, density A, volume VA, and weight WA is thrown from a rowboat floating on the surface of a small pond and sinks to the bottom. The weight of the boat without the jettisoned object is WB. Before the object was thrown out, the depth of the pond was HP1, and the bottom of the boat was a distance HB1 above the bottom of the pond. After the object sinks, the values of these quantities are HP2 and HB2. The area of the pond is AP, that of the boat is AB, AB may be assumed constant so that the volume of water displaced by the boat is AB times the quantity HP minus HB. Part A, derive an expression for the change in the pond depth, HP2 minus HP1. Does the liquid level of the pond rise or fall, or is it indeterminate? Okay, let's draw a picture. We'll start off with a picture here. Okay, so we've got um, state one right here. State one. Um, we've got a pond. We've got a boat. We've got a boat sitting on the pond here. And it's got an object. The object has a density, a volume, um, and a weight. That's just the object. And then the boat has a density, a weight. The height of the pond is HP1. And the height of the boat is HB1. That's the height of the boat off the bottom of the pond. Okay, and then we've got state two over here. We've got our same pond here. Um, the water level changes, but we've got our boat here, but we've thrown the object into the bottom of the pond there. Um, our boat still has the same density and the same weight. Um, but the height of the boat in state two is denoted like this, and the height of the pond changes into this state as well. Okay, so the first thing I see here is that we need to do a force balance. So let's do a force balance on these two different states. Um, Okay, so for state one, um, so let's draw our, our force diagram here. We've got a force going up on the boat. That's the buoyancy force. And this is balanced by the weight of the object and the weight of the boat. And then in state two, we've got our boat here the object's not there anymore, and we've got um, a new buoyancy force, and we just have the weight of the boat, and those are equal to each other. Okay, so we have we have some more information um, that we can pull from these diagrams. So we have our force balance. We also know that the total amount of water that's in the pond from state one to state two, we know that those volumes are equal. So the total volume of water, the total volume of water in the pond in state one is equal to the total volume of water in the pond in state two. So um, we've got our force balance in state one, our force balance in state two, we've got our volume balance here um, that the total volume of water doesn't change in the pond. And, and the last bit of information that I think will come in handy in this problem 
is um, if we take a look at um, force B1, the buoyancy force in part one, versus the buoyancy part in, in force two, we see that the buoyancy force in force one is equal to the weight of the object plus the weight of the boat. But the buoyancy force in state two, it's just equal to the buoyancy force of the boat. So clearly, you can see from these two equations that the buoyancy force in state one is greater than the buoyancy force in state two. So that gives us a hint as to um, how the boat moves. The boat comes out of the water a little bit. Um, now we just have to know if the amount of water displaced by the boat um, is enough to change the water level with relationship to the to the boat on the bottom of the pond. Um, and that's really what we're trying to find out, the difference between the heights um, in the pond. So, um, but this kind of gives us a head start as to looking at, okay, what does that relationship look like? Well, we know that the buoyancy force is larger in the first state than in the second state. Okay, let's kind of go with our force balances and see if we can derive an expression for HP2 minus HP1 so that we're looking at how does the height of the water change because that's what they asked us to look at in part, um, in the first part, part A. Okay, so let's start off with our first force balance. Okay, and let's use our um, F equals the mass times acceleration here. So the, for the buoyancy force equals, so we got the mass of the displaced water times gravity, and we've got the mass of the object times gravity plus the weight of the boat. We're gonna divide both sides by gravity and we know that mass equals volume times density, so let's break those apart as well. The density of the displaced water times the volume of displaced water. The density of the object times the volume of the object plus the weight of the boat divided by gravity. Let's uh, break apart this volume so that um, the volume of displaced water will be the cross-sectional area of the boat. That's AB times the change in height. So we've got a certain height here and a certain height here. Um, the cross-sectional area of the boat times the difference between these two heights, HB1 and HP2, or HP1. Um, so, so let's break that up equals the density of the object times the volume of the object plus the weight of the boat divided by gravity. Okay, that's about as far as we can go with the first force balance, so let's do the second force balance. So this is the first one. Now let's do state two. Um, got the buoyancy force two equals the weight of the boat. So breaking these up, in the same way we did just before, HP2 minus HB2 equals the weight of the boat divided by gravity. Okay, so now we're doing um, number two minus number one. Um, we're, we're subtracting these two um, forces, these force equations that we have, because what we want to end up with is something that says HP2 minus HP1, um, and we've got the terms right here. So let's, uh, let's subtract two from one, and then we'll get something that says HP2 minus HP1. Hey guys, in editing I found that uh, some of the algebra sections were really long in this video, and the video is already pretty long, so I'm just speeding up the algebra here, but let me know if you guys have problems with that in the comments and the weight of the boats will cancel out. 
and that's great. So let's uh, cancel those out and then do some rearranging algebraically so that we can end up with HP2 minus HP1. Um, right away I can see we can divide by um, the density of the displaced water times the cross-sectional area of the boat as well to make that easier. So. Okay, and I'm going to simplify this just a little bit so I don't have to keep writing HP2 minus HP1 and, and HB2 minus HB1. I'm going to change this into delta HP minus delta HB equals. Now, unfortunately, we don't know how much um, the volume of the boat or the, not the volume of the boat, but the, the height of the boat. We don't know the height of the boat off the bottom of the pond, um, and we don't have anything that can really tell us what the sign of that is um, because we're trying to look at what the sign of this difference is um, of HP. So um, because we don't know what the sign of HB is, we can't really say what the sign of HP is. Um, all we can say from this is that the right-hand side of the equation, we know that that is negative. And we know that that's a negative because there's no such thing as a negative density or a negative volume or a negative cross-sectional area. So all of these values are positive, and then we've got a negative sign right here. So we know that the right-hand side of the equation is negative. We just don't know if delta HP or delta HB are positive or negative. So we can't say either way right now uh, with confidence um, which one you know, we can't answer part A. But we do have some more information here that we haven't looked at. So maybe if we look at this volume balance that we've got, it will give us some more information about one or the other. Um, we do have some information about these forces, but that still isn't enough to tell us about these, uh, these balances. So um, let's take a look at our volume balance and see if we can't get some more information. Okay, so we know that the volume of the pond in state one is equal to the volume of the, the pond in state two. So the volume of the pond in state one is equal to the cross-sectional area of the pond times the height of the pond, minus a couple of things. Um, minus however much volume is being displaced by the bottom of the boat. Um, that's how much volume is being displaced by the boat. So, so that's the volume of water in state one. And in the second state, it's very similar. We've got the volume of the pond times the height of the pond, but then we subtract the volume of the boat in state two, and we subtract the volume of the object. I ran out of room, so I wrote it down on the next line here, but um, we also have to subtract the volume of the object because that's taking up, that's displacing some water as well. Okay, um, so now let's com um, simplify this equation um, and try and get some more information, get something that looks like HP1 minus HP2 once again. Um, so let's do Let's start in on the algebra here, and I may speed this part up, but you guys can follow along with how I'm doing the algebra. Um, I'll just probably cut out the audio here.
Okay, so now we've finally got our um, volume balance in terms of delta HP and delta HB and a, a few other terms that we know the values of, or at least we know the relationships of um, between each other. Um, so this is great. So now we have two equations um, and two unknowns in a way um, that we can work with here. So that's that's great. So we can use our a result that we got from our force balance and this equation and um, eliminate a variable. So we can eliminate delta HB and, uh, and hopefully get some usable information about delta HP. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. This is from our force equation. Okay, and I'm going to multiply this equation by a b because I want when I when I combine these two equations, um, I want to eliminate this variable so that I only have delta h p. Okay, so I'm going to subtract. Um, oh no, I'm going to add these two functions together because this one is this one's already a negative so I'll add them together and this term should cancel out okay so now I need to combine these terms and uh, my delta HP times a B cancels out and I'm just left with delta HP times a P and that equals um, do one more simplification here, and I'll pull the V8 out of this side of the equation. Okay, so this is some really helpful information. So what we know now, we have everything in terms of, of HP now, which is awesome. Um, okay, so, so we know that this is positive, this is positive. And what do we know? Do we know about these densities? We know that... Um, the density of the object is greater than the density of the water. And we know that because the object f sank. It didn't float when we, when we threw it out. So that's some important information right there. In that case, we know that this ratio that we've, we've got in our equation here, we know that the ratio is greater than 1. Now, if the ratio is greater than 1, and we're doing 1 minus that ratio, well, we know that this term is negative. So we know that, that this is negative, this is positive, and so we know that the right-hand side of the equation is negative. We know that this is positive, so the only thing that could make the left-hand side of the equation negative is if H delta HP is also negative. Okay, do you guys see how that works? So delta HP is negative because we know that the term in parentheses over here is negative. And if we have an equation sign here, that the both sides of the equation need to be the same sign. Okay, so delta HP we know is negative. Okay, so that answers um, uh, the question, does the level of the pond rise or fall? Well, the level of the pond falls um, because it, from state 1 to state 2, um, we know that the height of the pond in state 1 is higher than the level of the pond in state 2 because this is negative. Okay. And our expression for delta HP is um, VA over cross-sectional area of the pond times 1 minus the density of the water versus the density of the object. Great, so that is it for part A. Now let's do part B. Okay, so let's move on to part B here where we have to figure out what the sign of delta H B is. Okay, um, in order to do that, let's do the same procedure that we used for delta H P and just eliminate delta HP instead of delta HB from these two functions. 
So instead of instead of multiplying by AB and, and getting rid of delta HB, let's um, do a different addition of these two functions and eliminate delta HP instead. So let's do that down here. So we've got our force balance function here, and then we've got our volume balance here. Okay, and what we would want to do in order to get rid of delta HP is we want to multiply this function by negative AP minus AB. Okay, um, so we'll multiply that and, uh, and then we'll add these two functions together. Um, so the delta HPs um, go away and we're left with Okay, and then we can pull this out. And the delta HB times AB cancels out and we're just left with this function. And I think we can begin to do our analysis here. Okay, so let's do our sign analysis here. Um, the we know all of this is positive. One is positive, and this is positive, and this is positive. The only ones we don't know right off the bat if they're positive or not is this difference and this difference, okay? But let's, this lets us leverage what we know about the pond and the boat. Um, so let's examine that a little closer. The area, the cross-sectional area of the pond is greater than or less than the cross-sectional area of the boat. Well, we know that the boat is sitting on the pond. The pond's cross-sectional area is larger, by definition, than the cross-sectional area of the boat. And because we know that AP is greater than AB, um, this gives us an additional element of information that can, that can help us learn what delta HP, what delta HB's sign is. Okay, so... Um, we know that this is greater than 1, so it's positive, this difference, okay? So because we know both of these values are positive, and we know that AP is larger than AB, okay? So this, this is positive, so everything on the right-hand side of the equation is positive, and all the green values are positive. On this left-hand side, AP is positive. So that means A, delta HB has to also be positive because everything over here is positive. That means everything over here has to be positive. Okay, so that means delta HB, delta HB is greater than zero that means that HB2 is greater than HB1, which means that the boat is further from the bottom of the pond, even though the pond level drops. Even though delta HP is negative, we know that delta HB is greater than zero. And that means that in state two, the boat is further from the, the bottom of the pond than it was before, even though the level of the pond dropped. So that is pretty cool to know that. Okay, so let's get our, our finish off our function here for delta, our expression here for delta HB. And uh, let's do this. Great, and that is our function for delta HB. And that's it for problem number 3.9. Thanks for joining me. If you found a different solution than I did, um, please let me know in the comments and I'll investigate that and we can see what we can do to, to solve any discrepancies that we have here. Um, 
this was a pretty complicated problem. It took me a while to figure out all the different avenues you could go down, and I'm sure there's other ones I haven't explored. So it'd be it'd be great to hear from anybody else who's done this problem. Um, anyway, thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you in the next problem. Thanks. Bye.